Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV and welcome to the third episode of The Mode Down. Now, we've been doing this now, this is the third week, and I've been sort of mixing it up each week and doing something just a little bit different. Now, our first episode, we mowed down the most eye-rolling comments, the ones that just make you go, really? <laughs> This one, what I want to do is actually look at some of the more intelligent and good questions and comments that we get and really give some good answers because some of them are really worthy of discussion. All right, so let's get to it. So last week on the Modown, I actually sort of went down the list of things that I really have a problem with when it comes to self-driving cars. And Motor City J said, the only, the only person I know who's excited about this is my 87-year-old uncle who's very independent and only recently has had trouble driving. He says he'd buy one now if they were available. <laughs> Well, actually, you hit on something very important because that goes to one of the many concerns I have about autonomous cars because already, they haven't even gotten on the market yet, but they're already appealing to people based on expectations that they don't have to be fit drivers. And look, I had a father, I had other family members who we had to take their driving privileges away when they got too elderly to drive, you know, their cognitive skills, their physical coordination, their vision. There's a lot of reasons that some of the elders among us shouldn't be driving and already we can see that some of the elderly among us are looking at this concept of self-driving cars going, oh, I can drive now. And the fact that a car is autonomous and self-driving doesn't make a person who's not fit to drive any more fit to drive. And because they don't always work in autonomous mode, whether construction zones, the maps aren't accurate. There's going to be a lot of times when these new autonomous cars, no matter how good they are, aren't going to be able to operate autonomously. And so the driver, whomever it is, will also still need to be a fit driver in those times. And there are also times when the autonomous cars might be going down the road in full automatic mode and something might occur. Again, might be weather, might be conditions that were unexpected to the computer. And it's going to ask that driver to take control. It's going to give them prompts. It's going to give them bells and whistles, whatever the case may be. And at some point, it's just going to stop being automatic. If the driver's not paying attention, if the driver's not able to be aware of that situation, that's going to pose a big safety problem for all of us, not to mention them. And the problem with senior citizens is, as we know from watching our neighborhood news, they are often subject to, well, falling into things very easily and, and being beguiled a little bit more easily. And I hate to say old people are stupid, that's not what I'm saying, but we all know that sometimes the more elderly among us are more susceptible to things, uh, getting the wrong idea about things, and so they're more likely to be the ones that drive themselves right off a cliff because they really believed and trusted in their autonomous car not to screw up. So that just really hits on uh, one of the major issues that we talked about there in that video. Now moving on to the next thing, on the Subaru WRX video we did, we, we talked about this before. I knew this car would really elicit a lot of comments and Rex Spec 06 says, good review, but who cares if the ride's rough? It's a no compromise performance car, so it requires a driver to be equally dedicated, not pansy drivers that whine about a harsh ride. Okay, so if you really watch the video closely and listen to what I said, I wasn't whining about the rough ride. What I was whining about was that the rough ride that it has was really rougher than what the structure and the interior trim on that car could handle because what that rough ride caused was the car to feel like a $40,000 pile of shit, okay? The dash rattled incessantly all the way down the road. Every time you hit a bump when you got on a rougher pavement or any kind of anything, the dash rattled, the door panels rattled, the, the headliner rattled, and I'm sorry. Um, I don't care what a car costs, if it's $20,000 or $40,000, it doesn't get to feel like a POS. And that, that was the point about the rough suspension, because here's the thing, I had a Roush, a 2001 Stage 3 Mustang, okay? That car had a very rough suspension. I mean, it was bone jarring and I loved it. I actually like a rough, tough suspension, but even in this Mustang, which not known for being a Paragon of quality, that suspension didn't cause that car to rattle and shake like a POS. And those convertibles aren't exactly the strongest structures in the world. So I think it's saying a lot that over 20 years later, 
we're, we're at a point in time where a new car is rattling and shaking like that. So it really wasn't about the suspension wrecks. It was about the fact that the suspension really, um, it, it was more than what the structure of the car could handle. And that, that was the point. Now, moving on, Ricky S. on the Honda Pilot test drive said, Sam, can you please get your hands on a Chrysler Pacifica van for 2017? Actually, we did a, a quick drive on one of those, and the link is below, but also, um, it really brings up a good point that I'd like to talk about because it sort of lets me talk about some inside baseball with our business because we get a lot of requests, comments usually, saying, can you drive this, can you drive that? And... A lot of the times, unless you're Motor Trend or Car Driver, or maybe the guys at TFL Car who have 2.7 bajillion viewers, we don't get to really specify what we get to test drive. We don't have that luxury. We don't get to call up the auto manufacturers and order up all the vehicles we're going to test. Most often what happens is we are subject to what they have in the local fleets. And basically how this works is the automakers, they maintain press fleets fleets of cars in all the major markets across the United States. Now, the biggest markets being Los Angeles, Detroit, New York, those are the places where the journalists that are there have the biggest selection of cars to pick from. Now, you get into secondary markets, like we're located here in Phoenix, Arizona. There's plenty of them across the United States, Dallas, Atlanta, Denver. Uh, Denver actually has a pretty big fleet because TFL cars up there and they command a lot of stuff, but I'm teasing a little bit. But the reality is, is here in Phoenix, we don't have that large of a press fleet. We don't have all the brands like the high-end stuff like Porsche, Lamborghini, Jaguar, Land Rover. Not a lot of cars from those manufacturers. Most of, we get, most of what we get here, bread and butter stuff, not always the really high-end niche stuff. So believe me, I always talk to the manufacturers weekly. I say, this is what's hot. This is what we'd like to drive. And they pretty much give us what they want us to review because... You know, they're marketing arms. They want to sell certain cars. There's certain cars that compete against other cars they really want to push. So that's most often what you see as test driving. Very good question. And even though I can't uh, answer this directly in the sense that, yes, I can tell you when we're going to do a full test drive on the Pacific, I know we've got one coming a little bit later this summer sometime. I don't know what the model spec's going to be, but we always love to hear from you. Um, about what you, want to, what you want to see tested because it does give me some input to tell the auto manufacturers and based on our ratings, it's typically trucks, muscle cars, and SUVs in that order. Next question or next comment is uh, Ben J uh, on the Duramax first tease. He actually says, Sam, I don't know if you plan to do a Q&A video, but if you do, I've got a question. If you could drive any fictitious vehicle, be it a Batmobile, Coyote from Hardcastle and McCormick, General Lee, Dukes of Hazard, Kit from Knight Rider, so on and so forth, what would it be? Now, this is kind of a, you know, what's your favorite color question, but it, it was cute. You know, I thought about it because the Bullet Mustang, I loved the Bullet movie. The Bullet Mustang, the 1968 Bullet, but you know what? I owned that car for the most part. It wasn't green, but I had a GT390, you know, V8 68 Mustang, and the thing drove like a truck, so I don't, I really wouldn't want that. Um, you know, if I really had any car that I've seen in a movie, it would be maybe the Eurospec M5 that was used in Ronin, or the S8 that was used in that movie. Garden variety cars we can get here already, not a big deal. Uh, the kit car from the most recent version of um, kit, the remake they did just a few years ago, had the GT500. I'd probably go for that. That was one Mustang that actually didn't drive too terrible, even though it still had a solid axle in the back. Anyway, pretty neat question. Now, Ryan M. on the Modown on our first said, Whatever happened to the cowboy hat? Now, I've been dying to answer that question, and Ryan, I'm glad you asked it because I've seen it a few times. For those of you who've, who've not been with us that long, the first year that I did these videos, I wore a black cowboy hat. And you can see it here. And if you search back in our older catalog of stuff, you can find these things. And I think I really have to tell you where it started to really explain the whole thing. See, when I first started doing this, I didn't know how to stand in front of a camera and talk. I wasn't very comfortable doing it. Now, I don't really care. I'll stand here in my underwear. Actually, no, I won't. But my point being is, um, I had some advice from people around me. They said, you know, find a getup that not only makes you distinctive, but find a getup that, that you're comfortable in. And so the cowboy hat was something that was with me. It dated back. I did a uh, Mustangs Across America event back in 2004. It was covered by the Travel Channel, a big documentary they did for Kings on the Road. And in that particular documentary, I had my black cowboy on, uh, hat on, which I wore often at the time. 
and it just became sort of my trademark. So when I started doing these videos, it was all about uh, sticking with what I knew, wearing the cowboy hat. I live here in Arizona. It's not that out of character for me. And so I did my car reviews, uh, the black cowboy hat. Well, that made sense to a certain degree. Problem was, um, unless it was a you know pickup or a SUV or some kind of an off-road thing, it didn't make a lot of sense to the viewers looking at a $90,000 Lexus. Who's this cowboy? testing the Lexus or the Mercedes or the Audi, it just, it didn't fit. And so the marketing department finally said to me, you know what, you're, you, you're, you, you, if you want to make a living at this, if you want to pay your mortgage with this, you need to appeal to a wider swath of viewers. And I hate to be a whore to the ratings, but that's honestly what it was. It was the fact that the cowboy hat just didn't register to people that were shopping for anything other than a pickup truck. Uh, that's really what it is. And so, and the, well, and the other thing is, is I, I'm comfortable now without it. I don't feel like I need it as a prop. So there you go. That is the mowdown for today. A little bit inside baseball and a couple accounts. Now, always welcome your questions and your comments. If you have questions about how we do what we do, why we do, or any other comments, put them down below. And I also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click on the link right here and do that. And I always put that pitch at the end of my video, so I won't go over the whole thing. But one thing I do want you to do that's a little bit different is we've got a Facebook page, we've got Twitter and Google Plus. If you're on any of those, go there, type in Test Driven TV and pull us up, follow us there because we do a lot of exclusive content on those social media channels that we don't always have here on our channel. We, there's photos, there's observations of our test cars, and there's sometimes preview videos that we don't have here on YouTube. So a lot of exclusive stuff that you don't always see here. So stay tuned.